From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. They don't want us to have a future. Arizona GOP leaders moved to stop what they called the madness of the impeachment inquiry against President Trump. Plus, pedestrian crossings at all Arizona ports of entry have dropped sharply this year. We take an in-depth look at why. And friends and loved ones are remembering former Arizona Cardinals owner Bill Bidwell and the legacy the NFL icon left behind. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Marcella Bayetto. And I'm Jordan Elder. Thank you for joining us. Our big story tonight, Arizonans speaking out about the impeachment inquiry against President Donald Trump. After the White House declared today, it will not cooperate with what it termed an illegitimate impeachment probe by House Democrats. Trump attorneys sent a letter to House leaders bluntly stating their refusal to participate in the quickly moving impeachment investigation. The letter comes the same day Trump intensified his fight with Congress by blocking Gordon Sondland, the U.S. European Union ambassador, from testifying behind closed doors about the president's dealings with Ukraine. House Intelligence Committee members say they consider Ambassador Sondland's absence a, quote, obstruction of the impeachment inquiry. Just about an hour ago, Democrats issued a subpoena to the ambassador for his testimony, as well as his personal communication devices. Republicans say this is just the latest in an unfair process orchestrated by the Dems. The reason why the State Department decided not to have Ambassador Sondland um, appear today, I mean, you, it's based on the unfair and partisan process that Mr. Schiff has been running. You think about what the Democrats are trying to do, impeach the president of the United States 13 months prior to an election based on an anonymous whistleblower with no firsthand knowledge who has a bias against the president. On the other side of the aisle, House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff told press today the American people have a right to that information. The American people have the right to know if the president is acting in their interests, in the nation's interests, with an eye towards our national security. Uh, and not in his narrow personal political interests. They have a right to know, indeed, the American people have a need to know. Today, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham, who's the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, tweeted that he plans to invite Rudy Giuliani to speak to the committee about the, quote, corruption in Ukraine. Giuliani is President Trump's personal lawyer. So how is our state reacting to these recent developments? Well, we have full team coverage headed your way to answer that question from all party lines. Up first, Cronkite News reporter Isabella Holsizer. She spent the morning with Arizona GOP leaders at an anti-impeachment rally called Stop the Madness. Isabella, what did they have to say today? Today I traveled to Casa Grande for a GOP-sponsored rally and news conference. Stop the Madness rallies have been occurring all over the nation in response to the impeachment inquiry of President Trump. The rally took place in front of a, the District 1 representative, Tom O'Halloran's office, who supports the impeachment inquiry. Around 30 Trump supporters gathered to hear Arizona Republican Chairwoman Kelly Ward speak about stopping the investigation. Tensions were high as other protesters came to show support for the impeachment process. Ward indicated that the reason Democrats are pushing for the impeachment is because they won't be able to beat Trump in 2020. United States election integrity is important to Republicans. The Democrats know they cannot win at the ballot box. Get over this impeachment thing, this nonsense going on. You know, it's Russian hoax, it's porn star, it's, you know, Chinese, it's everything in the world to stop President Trump from doing what we ask, we want him to do. And uh, we want our Congress to step in and do what their jobs are supposed to do and stop this impeachment crap. It's nonsense. The event was co-hosted by Trump Victory Campaign. According to a USA Today Ipsos poll, 45% of Americans support the, support the vote of, by the House to impeach Trump. After the event, Ward headed to Tucson for another impeachment rally and news conference. In downtown Phoenix, Isabella Holsizer, Cronkite News. Arizona lawmakers are throwing their voices into the impeachment ring as well. Cronkite News reporter Eric Ruby is joining us now with what Governor Ducey and the state's two senators are saying. Eric? 
lawmakers remain divided when it comes to the impeachment inquiry against President Trump. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey has been the most vocal, telling KTAR he had his reservations about the rush to impeach the president, calling the investigation, quote, highly partisan and one-sided. The governor asked for more patience with the process before sharing the entirety of his judgment. As for Arizona senators, they're continuing to shy away from sharing their opinions on the matter. Republican Senator Martha McSally has repeatedly sidestepped questions about the president's actions, declining to comment. She's told reporters she wants to wait until the end of the investigation and that she doesn't trust the House to conduct an objective inquiry. As for Democratic Senator Kirsten Sinema, she told the Arizona Republic, quote, I agree with my Republican and Democratic Senate colleagues that Congress must be given complete access to the whistleblower's report and transcript as required by the law. Arizonans deserve a transparent and accountable government. Needless to say, Arizona's congressional delegation is taking familiar sides on the topic of the impeachment inquiry. In the broadcast center, Eric Ruby, Cronkite News. Meanwhile, President Trump is trying to turn the firestorm around on Democrats, accusing House Speaker Nancy Pelosi of treason, insisting she should be removed from office, not him, though members of members of Congress can't be impeached. So we wanted to know what you think about that. Cronkite News reporter Jonette Zarate is joining us live in the studio with reaction from viewers like you. On our Cronkite News Facebook page, asking, How do you feel about President Trump accusing Nancy Pelosi of treason, insisting she should be removed from office and not him? Over a hundred of you have responded so far. Here are just a few of your responses. Nancy Jane says, It is not treason to hold the person holding the highest office accountable. In fact, our democracy requires it. While Oveline disagrees, saying he is right, she should be fired, she is a nutcase. Lene wrote, he will never be impeached. We all know that it's a waste of time. No matter what he does, his people are 100% blind to it. They don't care. Timothy said, Trump is trying to do good for the country, and the only thing that Nancy is trying to do is hurt Trump. Melanie chimed in with the fact that he thinks she can be impeached shows how little he understands about our government. But Andy says he is right on, agreeing that Pelosi should be removed from office. And finally, Rosemary posted, he is a master of projection. Everything he accuses others of, he is doing. He is probably the most transparent president, as you can see straight through his lies, conspiracies, and hate. It's not too late to join the debate. Just head to Cronkite News Facebook to page to chime in. Live in the studio, Jonette Sarate, Cronkite News. For continuing coverage of the impeachment inquiry, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and find us online at cronkitenews.azpbs.org. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 prohibits workplace discrimination because of a person's sex. But does sex also include protections for sexual orientation and gender identity? That's the question the Supreme Court considered today as protesters on both sides of the issue rallied outside the court. Cronkite News reporter Hannah Ehrlich was there and brings us the story now from our Washington Bureau. Today was just the second day of this term but the Supreme Court was already tackling what is expected to be one of the most emotional questions of its year on LGBTQ rights. That emotion played out on the plaza outside the court where protesters on both sides of the debate spent hours today making their voices heard. While legal arguments were going on inside the courtroom, a louder debate was going on outside. Social activist Adam Eli drove down from New York to make his voice heard. And I want history to say that outside of this landmark case, there was this huge swath of queer brilliance. Eli and other supporters of the LGBTQ community say they have a right to workplace protection, but that fewer than half the states recognize that right, which is why it's important for the Supreme Court to set a standard for the whole country. There are 26 states in this country without explicit workplace protections for LGBTQ people. So you can get married in those states on Saturday and be fired from your job on Monday, and we have to correct that injustice. They believe that the protections against sex discrimination under Title VII 
already cover LGBTQ individuals. But Christina Holcomb, who was here on the hashtag sex not gender side of the debate, says the wording of the law is plain. American business owners should be able to rely on the law. And what the other side is trying to do in this case is essentially use the court system to redefine the word sex to mean gender. And if it's able to do so, that will create chaos in the law and frankly be harmful to women and girls across the country. Tammy Fitzgerald, who is executive director of the North Carolina Values Coalition, says there is a difference between the term sex and gender identity. And yet we have groups, as you can see here, who are advocating that sex ought to mean gender identity and sexual orientation as well. Phoenix resident Juan Hinojos disagrees. He hopes the court will rule in favor of the LGBTQ workers, but admits he's not at all sure how this court will rule. Uh, Supreme Court uh, conservative majority, it's kind of tough to tell exactly where this is going to go, um, but one can only hope obviously that it goes towards the way that we would like it to go with a non-discrimination against LGBT people and trans people. The court actually heard three cases today to deal with sexual orientation of workers in New York and Georgia. The third concerned a transgender worker at a Michigan funeral home. Rulings are not expected in any of the cases for several months. In Washington, Hannah Ehrlich, Cronkite News. New tonight, more than half of the Arizona students who took the AZ Merit test this spring failed in both math and reading. It's the fifth straight year this has happened. Though statewide scores showed modest improvement, officials are unable to determine why over half of test takers still fail. The answer may lie in schools' efforts to incentivize high scores. Though most high schoolers take the AZ Merit, passing the test is not a graduation requirement. This was the first year in which schools were allowed to substitute AZ Merit with another standardized assessment, including both the SAT and ACT exams. Friends and members of the Bidwell family gathered at St. Francis Xavier Catholic Church today in Phoenix to say farewell to their patriarch. Cronkite News reporter Corey Kirk was there at the ceremony as members of the Cardinals and NFL family paid, the, paid their final respects. As people filled the pews and there wasn't a dry eye in sight, all eyes were on Father Jim Van Dyke, who defined Mr. B's life in three words, faith, family, and football. It's one of the best services I've attended. And just hearing Michael and Nicole over the years, but really know about the legacy of dad. Michael and Nicole are two of Bill Bidwell's five children. In his eulogy, Michael recalled how involved his father was in his and his siblings' lives. Bill Jr. was at Georgetown, and I was at prep. He would take us to dinner and come watch my games. He made every game because he didn't want to miss a single snap when I got a chance to play. As an owner, Mr. B was known for his selflessness among NFL executives as someone who put the league's interest above his own. His love of the league, I was fortunate to be able to work with him for many years, and um, it was a privilege, and it was certainly an honor to be here today. Bounded by his faith, those that knew him said Bidwell always tried to help those in need, often without much recognition, something that he never sought. Just a, a gentleman of quiet dignity who did things uh, the right way all the time and never looked for any attention, uh, was always content to be in the background. Longtime Cardinals wide receiver Larry Fitzgerald was always honored to suit up for Mr. B. But Fitz feels lucky to have cultivated a relationship with his team's owner off the field as well. I know there are many players over the past few years that didn't have the privilege of getting to know Mr. B. And I regret that. You guys really missed out. As another way of paying homage, people in attendance were wearing a signature, a signature look of Mr. B, the bow tie. From here in the Media Center, I'm Corey Kirk, Cronkite News. Still to come on Cronkite News at 5, what's behind the slowdown in the amount of foot traffic crossing the international border? And we'll show you how the Miracle League is bringing a love of baseball to Arizona children with special needs. Okay, no.
Noticias is the Spanish-speaking division of Cronkite News, covering topics such as economics, education, sustainability, immigration, and border relations. Cronkite Noticias strives to serve the Spanish-speaking community in Arizona. Under the guidance of prominent Spanish-speaking professionals, students at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism develop content for our broadcast partner, Univision, as well as on Facebook and Twitter. Explore Cronkite Noticias at cronkitenoticias.azpbs.org. Stay in the know, on the go. At Cronkite News, we work hard to report the facts and keep you updated, whether we're on set or on the scene. Taking it from the studio to the field. So I'm here in South Phoenix. In Phoenix, we're just a click away. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, or find us online at cronkitenews.azpbs.org. During the first six months of 2019, Arizona ports of entry saw fewer pedestrians crossing than in previous years. That's according to the Bureau of Transportation Statistics. And while commercial truck crossings were actually up, the number of pedestrians coming and going between Arizona and Mexico was down 12% compared to the same period last year. Cronkite News reporter Frankie McClister went to Nogales and explained some of the reasons why. Frankie? Well, that lower number of pedestrians crossing from Mexico into Arizona is starting to affect those businesses because those businesses rely on those pedestrians to be their customers. Sometimes it's two minutes, sometimes it's zero. Sometimes you just walk up and sometimes it's all the way, all the way up to the train tracks, which is usually like two hours. Arizona resident Daniela Minerva frequently crosses the southern border while her Mexican husband lives on the other side as he processes his immigration paperwork. It's a commute by foot that can be unpredictable, forcing her to plan her day around it. It just doesn't feel like it should be that slow, you know? Business owners say their wallets are also feeling what they describe as a slowdown in the amount of foot traffic crossing the international border. Rebecca Castaneda works at Cheese, which is a store located just feet away from the Nogales port of entry. Every year, it's less and less. It's more down and more down. Bruce Bracker is one of Santa Cruz County's supervisors and says Customs and Border Patrol being understaffed is one of the main reasons why wait times at the border can stretch for hours. I know you've spent some time in downtown Nogales and you're seeing, you know, a lot of store closures and just not a lot of people on the street. You used to see people shoulder to shoulder on the street, especially on the weekends. CBP says there's a multitude of reasons for the drop in pedestrians crossing the border. They include the overall U.S. economy, the value of the Mexican peso, border violence, travelers opting to enter the U.S. in cars instead of walking, and pedestrian commuters joining trusted traveler programs and using the SENTRI, also known as Century, car lanes. It's wait time. So if you have a favorite store, and you go in that store, and, but that store started making you wait half an hour, 45 minutes, two hours to check out. How long would that be your favorite store? Probably not very long. You'd find someplace else to shop. That's how it is. But you have to just get used to it because that's how it is. Well, and the dynamics between crossings, between Arizona and Sonora, are the dynamics, the dynamics of a pedestrian crossing between Arizona and Sonora is a great re representation of family and economic ties between the two states. At the Digital Desk, I'm Frankie McClister, Cronkite News. Arizona gas prices have risen slightly in the past week, according to Gas Buddy, averaging $2.87 per gallon. That's way better than what Californians are paying at the pump. Unexpected production outages at several refineries supplying the West Coast have resulted in gas going for as high as $5 a gallon in some areas of the state. Experts are expecting prices to stabilize by the end of the week as production at the affected refineries continues. Right now, some of the world's best skydivers are in Arizona for the 2019 World Skydiving Championships. Teams from 16 different countries have just seconds to impress judges with their tricks, all while free falling back to Earth. The event touted as the Olympics of skydiving draws hundreds of the best skydivers from across the world to Eloy to compete. 
The competition includes multiple teams from Arizona. They'll compete in individual and group events, trying to perform as many complex tricks as they can. The competition began on Monday and will run through Saturday. So I don't know about you guys, but I think we would be a great skydiving oh, team. Oh, for sure. Uh, we I'm would beat everyone. <laughs> way too scared to do anything like that, honestly. <laughs> well, what about the temperatures? Are we skydiving to lower temperatures now? <laughs> so we are going to experience some temperatures that are below average this time of year. But before that, as always, let's start <laughs> the Tuesday weather report. So as you guys are getting off work right now, you can see temperatures are going to be sitting about 94 degrees around 5 p.m. Then if you're hitting Taco Tuesday tonight for the first Suns game of the year, you're going to see temperatures around 89 around the start of game time. Then they're actually going to dip all the way to 81 around 10 p.m. Let's see, your valley lows for tomorrow. As you can see, below average temperature, 63 in Scottsdale, 60 in Surprise, and then up north, 59 in Cave Creek. Let's see what your Wednesday is going to be shaping up to look like. 71 when you wake up, 86 around 12, and then it's going to actually go up to 90 degrees around 6 p.m. Let's see what the next three days for you are looking like. As you can see, Wednesday, sunny, 95 degrees. Thursday, also sunny, 88, and then also Friday, sunny, 88 degrees. Let's see what the rest of your weekend is going to be looking like. As you can see, 90 on Saturday and Sunday, and then it's going to be sunny both days. And then as you head into the new week, Monday and Tuesday, both are going to be sunny, 89, 90 on Monday and Tuesday, and we're going to be below average temperatures for the next seven days. I'm Miller Thomas from the Cronkite News Weather Watch. Up next, a few things unite people like sports. And we've got your front row seat to a wiffle ball tournament getting Arizona's special needs children into the game. Don't go away. As journalists at Cronkite News, we report on stories that matter to you by focusing on the local impact. We dig deeper and work tirelessly to keep you informed. Live in Wicker Bird. Live in Los Angeles. In Cleveland. In Washington. In Louisville. From Jerusalem. Live in Philadelphia. From around the world to right here in Phoenix. At Cronkite News, we report the facts and stick to the truth. Nevaz. Tonight on the News Hour, President Trump under fire for abruptly announcing the removal of U.S. troops from Syria. That's coming up after Cronkite News and Arizona Horizon on Arizona PBS. A league that is full of miracles where kids, no matter their disability, get to play baseball. As Miracle League Arizona starts its new season, Cronkite News reporter Lindsay Amundsen was out at opening day. To kick off the new season of Miracle League Baseball, the league held its fourth annual Wiffle Ball World Series in Scottsdale, a tournament that helped support the over 300 Arizona Miracle League players live out their dream of playing baseball. Jaden's going to tell us all what to do. Baseball! The money raised from the Wiffle Ball tournament will help kids like left-handed slugger Caden Newman. Caden was diagnosed with spastic diplegia cerebral palsy and a global developmental delay at the age of two and autism at the age of four. But with the help of this fundraiser, it allows these kids to play in a league fully designed for them. Amazing. It is amazing. It is. Yeah, They it took is. their time out of their Saturday to come and play, play ball together to to support you and it means a lot. Yeah, it means a lot to me. For one hour a week, the Newmans get to watch Caden do what he loves most, play baseball. With his White Sox hat, Rockies jersey, and dinosaur converse on, the countless surgeries, long rehabilitation, and any limitations don't matter as soon as he steps on the field. Special needs parents in our lives and our families are so surrounded by the diagnosis and the doctor's appointments and the therapies that 
being able to come and know that there's some place for our children to to play sports and for us to you know just enjoy it and just watch them have fun. When Caden first started out at the Miracle League three years ago, he had to use his reverse walker. Now he can run around the bases all on his own, something his family was told he probably wouldn't ever be able to do. And that first time that he put his walker away and he walked around the, the bases, I mean, that is just like a Miracle League crying moment. It was so phenomenal. You're so happy for these kids that they're just, they're growing and they're advancing and they're able to walk by themselves now. I, you can't, it's just, it's kind of indescribable. When he first got diagnosed, we didn't know. We, we couldn't even predict what the next week was gonna look like, I mean, much less what the next, you know, 18 years would look like. And now we can look at, we can look at him and we can watch him and watching him walk around the bases of the Miracle League for the first time was huge for everybody. After a life-changing diagnosis, the Newmans didn't know what life for Caden would be like. But after three years in the Miracle League, they have no doubt that now seven-year-old Caden can do anything he sets his mind to. That was such a beautiful story. Was there a lot of people there? How'd you feel? You yeah, know, a ton of that? people. They have over 300 players in the league, but also my wow. favorite part of it was his motto is just, he owns it. He owns anything life throws at him and such an inspiring little boy. It really is. That was amazing too. His parents are big supporters there. Yeah, I come family. to every game. Yes. So his well, whole family's amazing. there, bring him donuts. That's so great. cute. Well, that's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Ted Simons and Arizona Horizon are up next. We'll see you again tomorrow night.